In this lecture, we'll talk about properties of logarithms. So let's start by talking about the properties of logarithms. For real numbers, A, capital M, capital N, and R, with capital M, capital N, and A all greater than zero, we have the following properties that we can use with logarithms. First, log base A of 1 is equal to zero. So regardless of the base, a logarithm of 1 is equal to 0. Second, log base a of a is equal to 1. So if the base of the logarithm matches what's inside the logarithm, it cancels out to give us the identity of 1. Third, a raised to the log base a of m is equal to m. So if we have an exponential raised to a logarithm that has the same base as the exponential, the exponential and logarithm cancel each other out, leaving just what was inside the logarithm. Fourth, log base a of a to the r is equal to r. So similarly to the third property, if we take a logarithm base a of an exponential with the same base, then the logarithm and exponential cancel each other out, leaving us with the exponent r. Fifth, we have a product property. If you take a logarithm of the product of m times n, we can split that up using two logarithms. So log base a of mn equals log base a of m plus log base a of n. Sixth, we have a quotient property. Log base a of m divided by n can be split up to be log base a of m minus the log base a of n. And finally, we have a power rule for logarithms. If you have log base a of m raised to the r power, you can rewrite that by bringing the power out to the front of the logarithm, being r times log base a of m. So let's do a few examples where we utilize the properties of logarithms. First, we want to evaluate some expressions using the properties of logarithms. First, we'd like to evaluate the natural log of e raised to the square root of 2 power. We could use the power property of logarithms to rewrite this, bringing the exponent of square root of 2 out into the front, giving us the square root of 2 times the natural log of e. And since the natural log and e both have the same base, we can use the second property from our list, giving us the square root of 2 times 1, which of course simplifies to be the square root of 2. Another way that we could approach this is we notice that we're evaluating the natural log of an exponential that has the same base. Natural log has a base of e. So since we're evaluating the exponential within the natural log, these cancel each other out, leaving us with just the exponent, which is the square root of 2. For a second example, we want to evaluate log base 6 of 9 plus log base 6 of 4. We begin by using the multiplication property. If I have log base 6 of 9 plus the log base 6 of 4, I can combine them into one single log using multiplication, which gives us log base 6 of 9 times 4. If we evaluate 9 times 4, that gives us 36. And we can rewrite 36 as 6 squared, so now our logarithm is being evaluated with an exponential of the same base. So the logarithm and exponential will cancel each other out, leaving us with the exponent, which gives us an answer of 2. For the next couple of examples, we're going to try to write a single logarithm as the sum or difference of logarithms. So using the properties, we want to break this up into the sum or difference of logarithms. So we're going to look at the natural log of x times the square root of 1 plus x squared. We'll start by using the product property, which says that if we have the natural log of a product, we can break that into the sum of the natural logs. So this would give us the natural log of x plus the natural log of the square root of 1 plus x squared. We can rewrite the square root of 1 plus x squared using a fractional exponent. So this gives us the natural log of x plus the natural log of 1 plus x squared to the 1 half power. And then we can use the power rule for logarithms to rewrite this as the natural log of x plus 1 half times the natural log of 1 plus x squared. Let's look at another example. Again, we want to break this single logarithm up into the sum or difference of several logarithms. So we're dealing with the natural log of x minus 4 squared divided by x squared minus 1 
all raised to the two-thirds power. We'll start by using the power property to move the two-thirds. That'll give us two-thirds times the natural log of x minus 4 squared divided by x squared minus 1. Now we'll use the quotient property to break this up, giving us two-thirds times the natural log of x minus 4 squared times the natural log of x squared minus 1. We can use the power property on the first natural log, and we can factor out the second expression to give us two-thirds times two natural log of x minus 4 minus the natural log of x minus 1 times x plus 1. And finally, we can use the product property on this last natural logarithm to split it up further, giving us two-thirds times two natural log of x minus 4 minus the natural log of x plus 1 plus the natural log of x minus 1. We can use the same properties to work the problems that we just did backwards to combine a sum or difference of logarithms into a single logarithm. So let's look at the example one-third times the log of x cubed plus one plus one-half times the log of x squared plus one. We'll start by using the power property. The one-third and the one-half out in front of the logarithms can be moved into the exponent position to give us the log of x cubed plus one to the one-third power plus the log of x squared plus one to the one-half power. Next, we can use the multiplication property. Since we had the sum of two logarithms, we can combine them into the single logarithm using multiplication. So this gives us the log of x cubed plus one to the one-third power times x squared plus one to the one-half power. And finally, we can rewrite this by changing our fractional exponents into radical signs. So this gives us log of the cubed root of x cubed plus one times the square root of x squared plus one. Previously, we said that the only logarithms that we can evaluate in a calculator are log base 10 and the natural logarithms. But we can actually evaluate any base logarithm with the calculator by using what's called the change of base formula. So if a and b are not equal to one and capital M are all positive real numbers, then the log base a of m can be evaluated by taking log base b of m divided by log base b of a. So to evaluate any base log with a calculator, we can use either the log base 10 or the natural log, meaning that log base a of m could be evaluated by taking the log of m divided by the log of a, or log base a of m could be evaluated by taking natural log of m divided by natural log of a. Let's do a couple of examples where we're going to use our calculator to evaluate logarithms with different bases. So we want to start by finding log base 5 of 18. If we apply the change of base formula, we need to evaluate the natural log of 18 divided by the natural log of 5. So we take the natural log of what's inside the logarithm divided by the natural log of the base. If we plug that into our calculator, we'll get approximately 2.8903 divided by 1.6094, and if we evaluate the division, we'll get approximately 1.796. Now let's try the log base square root five of eight. Again, we apply the change of base formula. We take the log of the number inside our logarithm divided by the log of the base. So we'll do natural log of eight divided by natural log of square root five. And note, you could use log base 10 as well. Either way, doesn't matter. And if we evaluate that with our calculator, the natural log of eight divided by the natural log of root five gives us approximately 2.584. Again, you can use either a natural log or log. If you did it with log, you should get the same answer.